Welcome back Troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. The day, the day has come that YouTube recognizes that people enjoy watching me unbox things and talk about guitar. So they sent me something to unbox before your eyes. That's right, the classic, hey, I heard you like unboxing things, here's something to unbox. So let's just go ahead and do it. Um, it's been a long time in the making trying to get to this point. I remember thinking uh, I'll never be able to get one of these things, but I really do think it's all thanks to my unboxing series that this was possible to get. My YouTube silver play button. How cool is that? Thanks for watching everybody. I'm glad you enjoy my content. So it reads, presented to the Troglies Guitar Show for passing 100,000 subscribers. For the guitar community, that is a huge accomplishment because not everybody in YouTube wants to watch about guitar. So I've definitely encapsulated a lot of people. That's a pretty good accomplishment, just strictly about guitars. But let's go ahead and check this out. So it looks like we get a little letter here. This one's signed by Susan. Some of the older guys will have the other person's signature because they just recently, not that long ago, changed their CEOs. And just says, uh, thanks for 100,000 subscribers. Don't lose sight, keep going. I think the old letters used to say something along the lines of, a million might seem really far away, but you'll be surprised how quickly you'll get there. I, I don't know if there's a million people that are into just guitars, but hey, we'll, we'll find out here. So thanks, Rick, for packing that. Now, doesn't that just look fancy? I think I'll just keep it there. <laughs> and now, a word from the sponsor of today's episode, Skillshare. Skillshare is an ad-free online video learning community for creative people. You can learn things like fine art, there's graphic design, animation, web development. You can even learn electric guitar and, ooh, singing made easy. Personally, I'm pretty pumped up to check out some of the videography and photography courses to help improve my own show. It looks like the class by Brandon Wolfel on Instagram Instagram worthy photography might be useful to step up my game there too. But anyways, I mean, with all these topics on Skillshare to choose from, it makes learning new marketable skills easy. And that's something that I personally like because then you can use that for either self-improvement, you can get yourself a better job, or you can even start your own path down the road to becoming an entrepreneur. So if you're interested in checking Skillshare out, the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a two-month free trial of premium membership so you can explore your own creativity. And after that, a yearly subscription can be as low as $8.25 a month. Now go get creative. So now let's get to some uh, guitar unboxing and stuff. We don't really have a lot of guitars today. But we do have quite a few small little packages, but let's go ahead and get the fun thing away because that was super fun to unbox, but then we have a, a sad boxing to do later on. So let's go ahead and check this thing out. This is a guitar that I found on Reverb. I don't remember if it was late at night, but somebody had sent me a message and said, dude, check out this back. And it's like, okay. That's a good clickbait, mate. Let's see what it is. And then I fell in love with it. So I made an offer and I don't think we were, you know, quite on the same terms at first, but then he kind of came back for my offer later on. And then there's a bunch of shipping troubles with this purchase because he was waiting for the boxes to come in because he didn't think it was gonna sell that fast. And he purchased these from Reverb. And then he boxed it up and tried to ship it with USPS and they told him, nope, that box is too big. <laughs> that is the one bad thing about the Reaver boxes is they are too large to be shipped with USPS, unless you cut them down to size. So he said he was gonna have to find some other box and then I told him, dude, just use Reverb shipping labels, ship with UPS and it's gonna be a lot cheaper. So we looked into that and yep, lo and behold, I was right. So he was able to get it shipped out the next day and a lot easier and I saved him some money. But what is in here is another one of my favorite Les Paul standard eras. And sometimes you can find really special examples. So let's take a look at this. I can see he used Reverb Shipping Guide. So this is a Les Paul standard, I think what, 2005? 
Yep, 2005. Oh, wow, that's chunky. That's why people like these, though, is they're still solid bodies and they haven't been weight relieved yet. Well, they do have nine hole weight relief, but they do not have the chambering that started in 2007. So this top is really nice. If you like the pinstripey flame stuff, it's not 100% my favorite, but it's still a great top. But the reason why I purchased this one, once again, the magical backs you can find. <laughs> Oh my goodness, even the neck. Oh my. Remember how I was telling you guys how you can find flamed mahogany and quilted mahogany back Les Paul standards? And around the mid 2000s, this is a fantastic example. The last one that I had that was flamed like this was nowhere near as extreme as this example. And the fact that it also has a flamed mahogany neck this is a 100% keeper. Somebody's gonna have to pay me a boatload of money for this one, because I'm not gonna let it go. It's just that special. And the fact that it has a new old stock appearance, they still left the sticker on it, that's special. But it's definitely got some wear and tear. I mean, you can see somebody's uh, let the strings ding it up. And there is an impression on the top right there, but if you were to install a pick guard, that would be gone. So it was definitely been played, but yeah, this is just, I'm speechless. <laughs> Thank you, whoever sent that link to me. I'm glad I was able to make a deal with this guy because that is a nice example. So this one's definitely gonna get a full review and demo and I'm actually gonna pair it with that quilted back one I have just to kind of show you guys some of those examples that are out there. Cool. And now we've got three small packages. I mean, YouTube award, Flamed back and neck, Les Paul standard. These aren't really gonna compare at all, but we might as well open them here. So this, um, I don't know what's in here. Let's just go ahead and open it. One, two, three, four, five. And what do we got? Nothing. And... Oh, okay, all right. So I thought about doing this for Trade Tuesday because I got a pretty decent price on these because the person who was selling them didn't actually know what they were or what to label them as. So this is when it pays to specialize in 80s Gibsons because these are very rare top adjust bridges. And what's kind of rare about this one is we actually have the brass saddles as well as the nylon saddle variant of the nine point adjustment bridge. So these top adjusts really only lived in the very early to mid 80s. So if somebody's missing one of these things, they have no other choice but to buy a whole nother bridge for him, unfortunately. So I will make these available on my reverb shop. It would almost be worth uh, making a small little video about these. It wouldn't be a viral hit, but it would definitely be an upgrade to the old video I did because now I could have B-roll shots and have both variations. And our next one comes from Gibson Dependable. I have not been looking at eBay auctions for about a good four months or so, and I just recently started to look at them again. And the reason why I stopped was because I just kept getting garbage guitars, like they had twisted necks or undisclosed issues. So it's just like, ah, I'm not gonna mess with eBay, but there's some cool stuff that does get listed. But this is from uh, Gibson Dependable, the guy that parts out Gibson guitars and whatnot. And, and sometimes you can get very rare parts from him because he just parts everything out. He doesn't care if it'd be worth more as a whole rather than part it out. That's just his business style, kind of like the stratosphere. And he just happened to list these. These came out of an Explorer E2 and they're original Dirty Fingers pickups. You've got the double row of adjustable pole pieces that are gold. So this is going to be a hard part for somebody to find to restore their original guitar. As whoever won that auction clearly didn't want the pickups because I think I was the only one that bid on the neck pickup, but there's somebody else that wanted the bridge pickup. But I was able to win it in the end. Now that I'm looking at eBay auctions again, I'll probably bring back that guitar hunting episode series again, but do it like the live auctions, because I think that would be a really fun uh, episode, especially when I miss out on something. You <laughs> there could be some uh, fun reactions there, but these appear to be really nice long leads. Looks like they desoldered them, or at least did a nice, clean, fresh lead. 
But yeah, if you're looking for these Dirty Fingers pickups with the gold pole pieces, they will be available on my Reverb shop. They won't be cheap, but they're there because I like to hoard this stuff because you never know when you're going to need it. Speaking of hoarding things just because they're silly rare, this thing right here, it showed up on Reverb late at night and it was a little bit more than I wanted to pay, but it's one of those things where I get to quote Norm from Norm's Rare Guitars. is my very favorite quote of his. I pay too much for it, so you can pay too much for it too. <laughs> But this is just an item you never find for sale separately. And I don't necessarily think the shop even knew exactly what they had or they just weren't trained of how to fully advertise something in a listing. Because in here sleeps a Billy Joe signature gig bag. How cool is this for the Green Day fan? You've got his symbol right here. That's what would have been on the case for the uh, Les Paul Jr. style. But this is actually one of the gig bags for the Double Cutaway Jr., which is the rarest Billy Joe signature guitar. Those things are hard to find for sale separately, and they did not get a first case like that first run, but you're gonna notice they still got the leopard print interior for the gig bag. So sometimes people will upgrade those cases and then they choose to sell these things off. But this thing almost smells like brand new. I mean, despite being made in China, this is still going to be the most expensive gig bag on the used market, simply because people like the leopard print interior and it's Billy Joe. So that was a cool find. I wonder if there's any case candy in here. Nope. Not in that one anyways. It'd be cool if we found like uh, what serial number used to be in here. Like that kind of paperwork, but it appears this has been cleaned out. Oh well. Time to move on to some boxings. Oh boy. This is kind of a sad goodbye today. It's, it's one of my last 70s and 80s art guitars. The super fancy of the fanciest that, you know, even if you have the money to buy these things, you can't always buy them. And this is most likely a one-off you know, Nam show piece is what I was eventually told by somebody who just happened to remember it. The Les Paul Super Standard. I think I've had this one about a year, year and a half. I mean, there's not very many buyers at the, you know, $15,000 price point, but this is definitely one that is worth it. But, you know, I just recently paid off my house. That was a huge accomplishment for myself. I was only one year later than I was really anticipating myself to pay it off at. So I'm kind of getting to that point in my life where I could afford to keep some of these really nice ones if I really wanted to. But just as I started thinking about that, that is when the person who bought my Steve Howe, the Les Paul said, hey, I want your super standard. Here's the money. <laughs> So I was like, oh man, this one's got to go to Spain too. Just when I was getting ready to keep it. that That's just the way it goes. Nobody wants it until you want it. <laughs> I thought about redoing the video for this one, but honestly, I think my first one pretty much did it on point. The only thing that we don't have in that is the whole potential Nam show prototype thing. But this is just a fantastic, you know, one-off built to the Les Paul specs, but without the wooden appointments. It really is a super special guitar and I will miss it. But you know, it's kind of cool. It gets to hang out with the Steve Howe V Les Paul. So I'm not that sad. At least those two are staying together. They were only apart for what, a month? But what a cool guitar this one was. Let's go ahead and say goodbye.
the hardest part is knowing which ones to keep and all the cool ones that I've already said goodbye to. It's really demotivating to start my collection, but I'm really serious about that museum thing. I mean, I can't really start one of those in my hometown, but I'm thinking maybe Fort Wayne because that would tie in with people that visit Sweetwater. They can then visit the Trogley's Guitar Show Museum. We're probably still a good, you know, five, ten years away from that, but I, I guess if I'm going to start a museum, I'm going to have to start keeping these really nice ones, right? <laughs> Hi everybody, um, trying to open this very carefully, it is as heavy as the last one, Eric if you're gonna buy some other guitars, we don't have any space anymore. Quickly! <laughs> tricky, tricky, tricky. Oh. Oh. The guy who delivered the thing was quite impressed. Yep. Ah! Here we go. Ta -da. Ta -da -da -da. Here we go. Ta -da. Beautiful. troglodytes for tuning into this boxing unboxing episode i hope you enjoyed don't forget to like comment and subscribe sign up for my mailing list and we will see you on the next episode take care